Ever since I was a kid, every Christmas time, every birthday, I would always ask for a musical instrument. Um, I think the first thing I got was like a plastic trumpet and then a saxophone. Then I got a keyboard. On the seventh Christmas of my life, I asked my parents for a guitar and they bought me a plastic one. And I was really angry because they bought me this plastic one. And, um, I wanted a real guitar, and luckily my birthday was in January, so um, by Jan come January they bought me you know, a, a wooden guitar. Initially my dad tuned every string to the same notes, like ding, 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 ding. Um, so I had trouble. I saw me and Johnny Marmot at, at, um, at school, we went to school together since we were 11, and he was just starting off playing guitar. I was a little bit more advanced at that time. And so we used to spend our, our dinner times, our dinner hour, um, just, just jamming and, and, and playing guitar. We started uh, a band together, albeit a very bad band. Um, and the bass player who's in the band, he could only play one song. And this guy could kind of play guitar as well, so uh, Johnny suggested that I maybe try the bass. As soon as I picked it up, I, I just fell in love with it. and. Uh, and just kept on playing it and been playing it ever since. Probably 10, 12 years old, it was all the, the glam rock kind of thing with Slade and Susie Quattro and the sweet uh, T-Rex. Um, so there was a good thing, a good few things came out of it. I discovered Neil Young and I, I became a, a, a hippie and started growing my hair and um, got in trouble at school for that. When I was about 14, the, the punk scene arrived. Um, and me and Johnny, we, we liked it, but we weren't really old enough to go to the gigs or, or, um, or get away with the look because we were at a strict school. So the, the, the Manchester scene started to grow. I, you know, I think the Sex Pistols did a gig at a place called the Lesser Free Trade Hall, uh, which I believe Morris was at, uh, amongst other people. Peter Hook was there as well. And, um, so Joy Division formed as a result of that. Um, and I think the Buzzcocks had already formed like a few months before that. Uh, myself and Johnny were in the same rehearsal space as, as Joy Division and the Buzzcocks. And we were a lot, a lot younger. Um, so we used to be in awe when, you know, when we used to see um, the Buzzcocks flight cases, you know, because we just had plastic bags and stuff to carry out. And it was an exciting time. From then on, it, it kind of picked up and, and we never looked back. But we could never find a singer. And um, I think Johnny became a little bit frustrated, so he, he left the band briefly. I didn't speak to him for maybe six weeks. And then um, I got a call saying that he'd started this band called The Smiths with this guy called Morrissey and blah, blah, blah. And they'd had one bass player for, for one gig, but he was a disaster. Um, so yeah, I got the call just to go down to a studio and um, uh, record three tracks with them. We took a demo down to Rough Trade in, in London and they signed us up straight away for, I think, a five-hour good deal. But, you know, I'm still a bass player, but the DJing thing was just kind of uh, to get me out of the house and keep me out of trouble, really, because um, I get stir-crazy after a couple of weeks of being at home. Something I started about five years ago. My manager's father and sister both got diagnosed with cancer within the same month um, and so I, I just thought I'll try and do a gig to uh, raise some money for the local hospital, the cancer hospital. And uh, initially I was thinking, you know, a small club or something like that, but then it just blew up and I got a really good response from all the bands that I knew. It was e the first year was easy because it was like, you know, I could phone up, you know, New Order, Ian Brown, all the, man you know, all, you know, all the Manchester people in my, ph in my phone book. Um, and we ended up uh, selling out the arena in Manchester. And yeah, we've done that every year so far. I'm also excited about, you know, the, the, the legacy that, that, we, that we left. And you can hear the, the Smiths' influences in, um, Lots of bands today. The worst part, I don't know. Probably, probably that um, being in that, that kind of gang mentality and being on the road and that solidarity kind of thing. Um, you know, I've been on tour with, with bands since, like Badly Drawn Boy and Ian Brown and a few other bands. But um, 
for now, like now, for instance, when I'm, I'm going around DJ and I tend to go around alone, so it's a bit, sometimes it can get a bit lonely, but Skype, I think Skype saved my life. <laughs>